Welcome everybody to our Prometheus modeling course 2D Helm Cook today. Today I want to show you something about how to set up a 2D hydrodynamic model with the HUD module uh, of Prometheus. We will also speak about the, uh, the plugins which are available in QGIS and I will also speak about some QGIS features which we, which we need for a model set. Okay, a uh, short introduction to the structure today. First, I want to give you really briefly an overview uh, over Prometheus. Then we want to speak about uh, the modeling task. So I will give you a, a modeling task, um, what you should, or a question, what you should answer with the help of a hydrodynamic model. Um, after it, I think I will make a short break and then we will start with the modeling work. This is subdivided into several se subsections, generation of GIS files, generation of Prometheus files, uh, then making a calculation with the help of Prometheus and then working a bit with the results of these, um, of the model. And I will end up with the summary. Okay, something to the learning approach. Um, so this is a bit different. I, I will give you some small hints in these lectures, some some, some words about some uh, about some information. Um, but I will mainly show, give you some links to our on your menu, online on your uh, manual. You see here already the link to the, the whole manual. Um, so it's a bit of self learning approach for you. So I will give you the structure. I will give you the links. Uh, I will give you the idea and the task, but finally, not all is in this presentation. I don't want to show you all, so I hope you can work with the, with the, with our online manual. This is the final objective of our online manual. And if you feel oh there is something missing, if you have remarks to our manual um, and also to the slide, then just give us this feedbacks that feedback so uh, it will be appreciated. Um, all information what you need here for this course um, are available under this link here. So I assume that you know this link because you've got these films or these movies and these slides. Okay, I think what is important, take your time when you when you when you are in the learning process. So explore the manual and the tools. So play with the tools, uh, make your faults and learn from them. I think this is very, very important. In general, if you want to, to learn a software and uh, especially also here for Prometheus and QGIS, so it's not the easy topic. So you have to work with QGIS, you have to work with plugins um, and you have to work uh, with Prometheus finally. But I think with this self-learning approach, I think you can be quite successful. Okay, a short overview over Prometheus. Uh, what is Prometheus? Prometheus is a free open source software package for the risk-based evaluation of flood mitigation measures for river Rhine regions. We applied it in coastal region. Now, currently, we, we are working in semi-arid regions, so it's a bit direction flash floods, uh, but also um, we apply currently for pluvial uh, flooding. Um, it's a modular design software package, so we have modules for the hydrodynamic analysis, for the risk analysis, for the analysis of consequences, the reliability analysis. So there are special modules. Today, we will see it later, we will focus on the HUD module, on the hydrodynamic analysis. There's a very tight interface to uh, QGIS. So um, we have here a data management system. So Prometheus is communicating with this data management system. It's a PostgreSQL database a local one in general. You can also set up a remote one, but we will use here a local one. And through this database, there's a strong um, tight connection, as I said, from the input to Prometheus. You can normally visualize it directly in QGIS itself, but also the other way around, um, you can sh sh the results which are produced by Prometheus, Prometheus, you can also directly show in QGIS. And Additionally, we have uh, now some plugins or a lot of plugins to prepare all the required files because we still need, at least at the beginning, files. 
to, to, to feed Prometheus, to feed the database structure. And this you can produce with the help of QGS plugin. So you see there's a really um, a strong connection between Prometheus and QGS. Prometheus itself has also a small GUI. Um, yes, this is what you what is way level currently. And we have now with this online manual here again uh, the link to it. So this is also the basis of the course. Um, work with this uh, manual, but we have to say this manual is also a work in progress. So for example, in the theory part, we are not so far yet. So we are working on it on it currently. Um, so, but it's work in progress. Here's some more information about Prometheus itself. So here a link to the introduction, to an overview, what is the ID behind Prometheus, then some application of Prometheus. Um, so there are some projects where, where we apply Prometheus, some student works, etc. And here you see a direct link to the project. Maybe check also here the test cases, um, then you get an impression what Prometheus is um, able to do. So our focus, I already mentioned it before, is that there's a HUT module of Prometheus. So a theory manual is work in progress. So we are working on it. Um, so we are really focused today on the HUT module of the hydrodynamic analysis. Um, so now a small part of theory because it's not yet in the manual. Um, I will, will present it here. Um, so what is a, the aim of the hydrodynamic analysis? So we want it's a numerical calculation of hydraulic values. This is the objective like water depth, flow velocities, etc. Um, so Prometheus, the HUT module of Prometheus used a lot of coupling between different type of models. For example, um, we can couple 1D rivers with 2D floodplain models. Uh, we can couple 1D river models, uh, 2D floodplain models with the coastal model. And today we will focus on the coupling between 2D, two 2D floodplain models. So what does it mean? Um, and why we want to apply it. So the idea is Prometheus is working with structured grids and the problem of structured grids logically is to, to get the, the boundaries of my, my uh, area under investigation in a nice shape. So normally you have to make a lot of, um, I don't know how, how I can call it, um, lazy elements in, in your grid which are not really needed in your calculation, but this slow down the calculation in contrast to unstructured grids. The idea is to, to overcome a bit this disadvantage by using coupled grids, as you can see here. For example, if this is your river, the course of your river, you can couple um, your, your structured grids in, in such a way that you are really optimal uh, around the river, that you don't have to, to make the, the whole area in one grid. No, you can use Small, uh, smaller crits which are coupled, or you can even uh, go to nested crits if you want to have some part a bit more detailed. Um, so this is an idea to, to, to make the calculation more efficient with the help of these structured crits. A big advantage of, of structured crits is, you will see it later, it's quite simple to produce the, 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 the crit itself. So for unstructured crit, you have to do net generation and so on. Here it's quite simple. You make some, you will see it, some rectangles. You make uh, one click in QGIS more or less, and you get your 2D uh, crit. Then a second feature, what we will use or what we want to apply today are the so-called um, 1D elements, which are used in a 2D floodplain model. And what does it mean, a 1D element? The idea is to use um, uh, hydraulic effective 1D elements, a typical example is a dike line in my, my 2D floodplain. So a dike line is maybe, I don't know, the width of a dike line is maybe five meters. If I have a crit element, which are 100 times 100, for example, I don't see these five meters or 10 meters dike line. So what can I do? I can, can artificially heighten um, some, some elements, but they are have a width of 100 times 100 meters, so it's not perfect. Um, the idea here is um, to use so-called 1D elements, so you can set a dike line, you see it here in gray, for example, if this is your dike line, 
then what the program is doing, he automatic, automatically transfer these diag line to the uh, boundaries of my elements, like here. And then the difference is that the, the exchange between the elements goes from the manning strickler formula, which is used for overland flow. Um, this is switched then to the wire flow formula, to the Polanyi formula. So here you get really a, a dike line in. So you have a dike line it's at the boundaries of the element. Yes, there is a small um, error in, sure. But um, at least we can still model these hydraulic effective 1D elements with the help of these dike line features. And this we will also uh, to use today. Um, so this is, was a bit about the theory, um, about the application. Our manual is a bit further. So here you have the link to read some um, ideas about the um, um, application of our HUD module. Good. Then um, I want to speak now about the modeling task. So this was a bit the overview. We are speaking about, we want to work with Prometheus, we want to work with the HUD module, and now I want to give you a modeling task. So, um, you meet a friend from Magdeburg. Magdeburg uh, is a city in Germany, you see here, Germany in Europe. Um, here you have a, a small, de more detailed look to Magdeburg. Um, this is a city of Magdeburg. Um, Magdeburg is at the Elbe River, you see here, uh, in this direction. The Elbe River goes here to the North Sea. Um, and Magdeburg is very, or the Elbe River goes through Magdeburg. Um, and your friend said, ah, he wants to buy a house, a new house in the so-called Herrenkrug area. So it's here, it's a Breitscheidstraße. By the way, this is also the neighborhood of our nice uh, University of Applied Science of Magdeburg. So here are our buildings. And here are some in, in this area, they are popping up. Uh, new housing areas and your friend you want to buy a, 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 a house there the price are still okay it's quite a nice area and um, it's quite uh, i would say um it's a bit of a rural area but you are very very close or you are still in the city like a rural area in a city uh, shape i can would call it but so he want to buy their house but and this is important you should know it, especially if you are a bit in in this topic of flooding, flood risk management. Um, we have several, we had several floodings at the Elbe River the past years. For example, 2002, 2013 was the last one. Here you see a picture of Magdeburg. So the Elbe was quite a large river at this time. Um, we had also several dike breaches uh, at the Elbe River. For example, 2013 here. Uh, in Fischbeck, this is a bit north of Magdeburg, maybe 50 kilometers north of Magdeburg, also at the Elbe River. Um, here was a dike breach and then um, the Elbe just flow into the, the flood plains in the low-lying areas. Um, so, um, and it was, you, you produced, or there were a lot of, of consequences, a lot of economical damages in, the, in this area. The Elbe River itself, we have a long, strong dike line, so the Elbe lost a lot of place, we have to admit, um, because of these dike lines. I think you also know that climate change will intensify flooding situation. I think this is um, well known. Um, and this is the last information, the Herrenkrug location. So here's a location where your friend want to buy a house. It's located in a dike ring. So here you see the dike ring in, in brown. Here you see the Elbe, the main Elbe River. Here's the town of Magdeburg. This, this is an area of Herrenkrug, which is part of, of Magdeburg. And here's a so-called Umflutkanal. This is a diversion channel for the Elbe River. It's to, to um, decrease the discharge here for Magdeburg. And here you see the Umflutkanal goes back to the Elbe. So after Magdeburg, um, the Elbe is again uh, unified and um, you have the high discharge. So, but this is a reason that we have here a, a dike ring in flooding situation. So we, we have here in, in the eastern part the Umflut Canal and here in the western part the, the main Elbe River. And here the house is located. Um, 
So the question now, what, what your friend is, is asking for, he knows that you are an expert in, in, in flood risk, in, in hydrodynamic modeling, so it's logical that he comes to you. Um, he asks you, is the location flood prone in case of a dike break in the southern part of the dike ring he's interested in? So what happens if there is a dike break, for example, here? Um, and he wants to know what are the maximum water depth, what are the arrival times in case of a dike break? break? Um, and finally, can you give him her an advice if he should or she buy the house or not? Um, so this is more or less your task. Perform a 2D model with the hood model of Prometheus based on open source data to give at least some hints to your friend. So we will do this based on open, uh, open source data and it should be quite fast. So he has to decide uh, in the next week, your friend. Good, I hope this is clear. This is a modeling task. Um, what you will get, you will get some data from me, from your friend. Um, I prepare it in, in three different folders. So in, in folder one, uh, you will find the base data. Here you will find um, the, the DGM-100 from LSR. LSR is a, is a land, the Bundesland in Germany, Saxony, Anhalt. So this is uh, the, the DGM, the, the elevation for a uh, 100 times 100 meter element. So it's a quite rough one, but this is uh, a way level uh, in the internet. You can, uh, you can find it, you can just download it. So it's the reason why I use it here. So it's also not about the, the, the answer itself at the end. It's also more about the, the modeling techniques for you. Huh? Um, it is important and the, co uh, the coordinate system, the coordinate system is given here as 2583. I think if you work with Prometheus or also if you work with QGIS, I think it's especially if you do spatial operations, I think it's always important that you say, okay, this is my fixed unique coordinate system. I will work with it. The same is it in Prometheus. So in this case, I propose for you use this coordinate system 2.25832. Um, also use it as a, a project coordinate system for your QGIS project. I think then you are safe. Um, if not, then it's possible that you get empty files or something like this because you don't find the, 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 the coordinates. So please work always in one coordinate system. If you want to transfer it, um, so it's possible here a hint. Uh, to a QGIS manual, how you can transform, it's quite simple, uh, shape files or TIFF files, raster files in QGIS to another coordinate system. Second data which I will uh, provide you is the DGMB. Um, I already transferred it for you. It's a, a two times two meter uh, raster, also the elevation, but it is just for the Elbe River. You can see it here so in gray this is also no uh, in black no um, data no info data um, so here you see um, the bathymetry more or less from the Elbe River why I provide it to you um, you see here really nice the dike um, the dike ring so the dike line you can see in this two times two meter dam um, you don't see it here logical in the hundred times hundred meter dam. so we will use this to generate our raster or 2D floodplain models and we will use this to get information about the heights and the elevation of our dike line crest. Also in the in the first folder in the one base data folder I uh, provide to you a, a text document. Um, this is an estimation of the breach discharge 2013 in Fishback. So this is estimated also by the LAV. Um, they are responsible for flood protection in uh, in, in the uh, Saxony Anhalt, um, and I propose to you, or I propose to you, to use this uh, as an instationary point discharge boundary condition here, um, and we will set it to the 2D floodplain mode. I also suggest that you split this or spread this discharge over three different elements. This is um, yeah, this is more about numerical reasons because um, so 
it's not just going in one uh, element this amount of, of discharge so you make it a bit easier for the program to, to solve finally then the equations it's only reason and here you see the this this uh, the time in hours and these are the discharge so what you have to do if you make your instationary boundary time series in a later stage that we have to divide these by three because we divide it on three elements so what we have to say here so this is from the modeling point of view that it will be a rough uh, estimation because we don't take any backwater effects into account so we just say it's flowing in what we have here as a boundary condition so if it somehow because the water level is is going up that it's normally in a, in a case of a dike breach it would f uh, flow less in in my my dike ring area this we don't model huh? so here we really model it's just for flowing in so this is a worst case scenario i would call it. but as i said before it's for you to learn how to apply promaters and qgs and the plugins it's not so much on on modeling technique um, another one, this is also due to nu numerical reasons, um, what we will do, we will also set here a, a, a boundary condition, a station, stationary point discharge boundary condition in this case, which is smaller, zero for example, minus five cubic meters per second. This we can spread over uh, several uh, elements here in this area. Why? It's because we assume here, this is assumption, that some of the water will also flow out. It's slowly because we are in case of flooding here, sure. So this is all flooded in, in case of flooding, naturally flooded, but some of the water will go out of the model. And so this is also a, a, a assumption which we have to, to make. Good, I think I will stop here, I will make a short break and then we want to speak after it about the modeling work.